Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 16 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, season 6. I am in the middle of upgrading my basic sorting system into a little bit more of a complex and interesting sorting system using logistics pipes. We've got a lot of work to do, so we better jump right in. So, real quick recap of last episode, we've started to replace some of the functionality that we had in our prior sorting system, and some of you guys who aren't familiar with logistics pipes might be wondering why go through all the trouble and all the cost of all these new materials if you're just doing the exact same thing you did before. Well, don't worry, we're about to get into that. Okay, so uh, basically what we've set up thus far is uh, items go into that chest there, and anything that shows up in that chest will automatically get sorted into here. Lands in here if it's a um, particular type of ore. We've got an ore dictionary item sync module that says any type of gold, silver, lead, iron, copper, tin, or nickel, which is ferrous, uh, is going to go ahead and land right in this here chest. All right, anything else that's not like that is going to go find its way throughout the system wherever it's appropriate. And this is our connection to power. Logistics pipes need power to do all the cool stuff that they do, and we're using thermal expansions energy system to keep that thing well powered. Okay, in here we've got some items set up to sort. We've got the polymorphic item sync module, which basically says anything that's inside this chest already gets sent here. So if you belong in this chest, you're already in there, so go ahead and just send it this way. Now there's one thing that we didn't set up. What I did do between this episode, by the way, and the last one is make sure polymorphic item sinks are set up uh, here, like that. So we've got these all set up here. So all these chests now are also set up with the polymorphic item sink. However, there's one problem. You'll note that when I placed string and sugar cane in here, it didn't go anywhere, did it? See, if I put some gold in, the gold's going to get pulled out and sent where it belongs, which is the metals chest. But why isn't the string and sugarcane going anywhere? Well, so far, the only thing we've defined the system to be able to do is route items that it already knows about, like this stuff already in the chest. So how do we handle this? Well, let's take a look. So first off, what we're probably going to want to do is use what's called an item sync module. Now, here's where an option exists. We could use just a regular old basic logistics pipe. Basic logistics pipes and item sync modules are both the exact same functionality. So if we were to take a look here, we'd see that this setup right here, this little interface, looks exactly the same as if we placed an item sync module into this chassis pipe. See how they look exactly the same? List of items and whether or not it's a default route. What is that all about? Well, basically, um, what you've got here is a list of items that this pipe will request. So you can specify exactly which items are sent to this requested pipe. Okay, so over here we're all using polymorphic item sync. We're saying if that item already exists in the chest, it's requested. So whenever it enters the piping network and it's trying to find a route to go to, it's saying, hey, what should I do with this iron? It's going to look at the polymorphic item sync right here and say, oh, there's some iron in this chest, so I'm going to be the one to request it. Okay, now with an item sync module, you can say, instead of saying what's already in the chest, you can specify through an interface and just say, hey, uh, you know, you know what, um, all the sticks in the world should come here. Okay, and then any sticks that enter the network are going to come down and hit this interface right here and land right in this chest. Okay, but since this is our miscellaneous junk chest, this is where we want to send things that don't have a home, we're going to go ahead and set this guy to be the default route. Yes. Okay, by doing that, you'll notice that all of a sudden there's a bunch of blue particle effects occurring. That's because we left items in the chest that didn't know where they should go. Those are the string, and I think there's a couple slime balls that we had over there, and a couple other things. So if we were to take a look, we'd see, oh yeah, everything's emptying out now. Okay, That's because we just gave things a default route. That's, in other words, a place to go if you have nowhere else to put it. If you don't know where the stuff goes, it goes here. Okay. Notice here now that we're getting string and sugarcane. Cool. Now, the interesting thing about the default route is that it has a lower priority than all the other stuff in the network. So let's say that, uh, you know, since the default route says I'll take anything, okay, polymorphic item sinks have a higher um, priority than the default route. So if iron comes in, the polymorphic item sink has a higher priority, so it's going to try and put stuff in here. Okay, a lower priority would be the item sink module with the default route. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and see that that happens. Cool. Now let's properly sort this stuff. I'm going to put the string in the mob drops chest, which has also a polymorphic, so I don't have to worry about that. Slime balls can go in here too, and reeds can go in the flower chest. Cool. So now we've got a default route set up. Next thing we want to do is make sure that um, certain types of items from certain types of mods can land in this chest. Okay. So uh, what we're going to set up here is a mod-based item sync module. Okay, so we're going to get the blue orchid from Ars Magica, 
and this guy's Ars Magica. This is Thomcraft. So Thomcraft and Ars Magica stuff is going to route here by default. That's what I want to set up. So all I got to do is set up a mod based item sync module and hit the exclamation point. Drop an item in the top left, and you'll see that that item is from Thomcraft and add it to the list. Same for this guy, Ars Magica 2, add him to the list. Now, anytime items in the Ars Magica 2 or Thomcraft mod get jumped into this chest, they should route to the appropriate pipe. So now the question is, which has a higher priority, a mod-based item sync or a polymorphic item sync? Because if we come over here and take a look, we'll see that water shards are part of Thomcraft. Let's make sure there's one left in the chest so that the polymorphic still works, and we're going to drop these in here. Where is it going to route? I'll be honest with you, I don't know. I haven't tested this yet. Oh, looks like polymorphic item sync is the destination of the day. So that's good news. So that means that, hey, if it exists in the chest already, you're the higher priority. So polymorphic item syncs have a higher priority than the mod-based item syncs. Okay, pretty cool. Alright guys, one more time, just because there's a little bit of a nuance here I want you to know about. Um, some mods are split up into different components. So for example, Buildcraft has actually several component mods built into it. One of them being Buildcraft Factory, which is the stuff that has like tanks. And another one being Buildcraft Builders, which is stuff like, uh, you know, the, the landmark and whatnot. So make sure when you're adding this to the list that you're aware of that, because you might want to have, you know, all your Buildcraft stuff go into one chest, like I have going here. Okay, I'm also doing the same for uh, Extra Utilities and factorization and let's make sure these pipes here what are they considered buildcraft transport see so um and this is buildcraft silicone okay so we've got a bunch of different you know transport stuff here different buildcraft um whatchamacallits so make sure that's all set up correctly but now that i've got everything set up right this should all route appropriately if i throw this 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 all this cool stuff in here right cool Everything should be routed to the appropriate place. Awesome. Gotta love it. I'm going to finish setting up the uh, other chests here off camera. All right, guys, now we're really getting somewhere. Let's set up the next component of this puzzle, and that's going to be right down here. Okay? Uh, right here, we're going to set up the uh, pipes that are going to transfer items into barrels for us. So for that, we're going to use, again, a logistics chassis pipe, Mark II. And you might be wondering at this point why I'm using Mark IIs everywhere. Don't worry about it. We'll get there. All right, what was in here? Smooth stone, okay? So instead of uh, putting uh, the, the polymorphic item sink, which is, I don't know, I could call it a little bit more expensive. I mean, it's not really that much, but eh. I'm going to go ahead and use the item sink module, a pretty good one to use, because we're going to say, hey, smooth stone, you go here. You're the requested item. Anytime smooth stone enters this network, um, it's going to prioritize coming right here into this guy. In fact, let's give it a quick old test, shall we? Throw in 48 smooth stone, and we should see this thing blinking at us. There it goes. Cool. So that's how I'm going to set that up. I'm going to use um, item sync modules and all that cool fun stuff. And I'll be back once uh, I've done setting up all those cool things. There's one thing I should note for you guys that's just a minor detail about this. The item sync module, there is one difference between it and the basic logistics pipe, and that is the item sync module will check inventory space before routing items towards this pipe. So um, basically what we're going to see here, and uh, you should be routing in just fine, you know. Hmm, for some reason it's bouncing back. That's interesting. Stone. Let's try and configure this item sync module. Hmm. Nope, he should be actually working pretty well, but for some reason it's not. It's bouncing it around. Let me figure out why that might be happening. That's actually a little bit weird. All right, a little bit of testing, and it turns out that um, piping items into the back of these with logistics pipes, for whatever reason, doesn't seem to work. So I've got two options. I could craft sneaky upgrades, but those are pretty costly. Or I could pipe into the top of these um, barrels here. I think I've got a plan. Let's make ourselves a block of glowstone. And to that, we're going to go ahead and make a gravity gun. Yep, gravity gun is a cool and useful item because it allows me to, yoink, pick up items and carry them around like they were nothing. I'm going to bring this uh, little thing down somewhere around here that will uh, kind of help keep it out of trouble. Is this a good place? Maybe. Let's get the wrench out and whack it on the top a couple times until it's rotated the correct direction. You know what? That looks pretty good, if I do say so myself. should really clean up down here. It's such a mess. Uh, I'll get there eventually. 
first make system work, then make system look good. All right, let me move my barrels downstairs. Simply right click with the gravity gun, yoink, and you're coming with me, buddy. Cool, be right back. So now this should be a simple matter of installing my laser six chassis pipes here and configuring all these guys. So which one had the stone in it? If you notice here, if you hold shift, you'll see the filter is stone. So when you um, pick up these um, item sync modules, they continue to have their filter set up in them. And if you really want to, you can set it up ahead of time by just uh, right clicking with the thing in your hand. Yeah, that's it, right click. And then I'll put stone bricks in here, for example. Now you'll see that stone bricks is the filter and we'll put this guy right here. Cool, right? Let me set the rest of this up. So the next component to logistics pipes that I want to show you guys is this nifty gadget right here, for which I'm going to need more iron chipsets. The terminus module. So remember earlier I was telling you guys all about um, how important priorities are, right? So a terminus module is a lower priority than, let's say, item sync modules and polymorphic item sync modules. Pretty much the lowest priority, except for the only priority that it's higher than is the default route. The default route is always the absolute lowest priority, I think. Pretty sure. Mostly sure. So uh, what we can say here is, hey, for example, cobblestone. Cobblestone's first priority will be the item sync module. That's this thing right here. Okay. Its second priority then would currently be the item sync mod module up there. That's the default route. Instead, we're going to change that up. Let's craft our cells. Do I have the stuff for it? Probably. A chest and a trash can. Cool. The trash can is going to delete any item from the world that lands in it. So anything that lands in this trash can, gone. See ya. Deleted. Adios. No more. Okay. So that guy's going to go right there. And I think I need to go grab myself another logistics chassis pipe. Mark two. This thing is going to be configured that, hey, any cobblestone that you have beyond the current number of stacks that fits is going to go ahead and land right here. And to do that, we just have to configure this with a terminus module. And we'll say terminus module, anything that's cobblestone, sand, um, anything we want to delete from the world if we have too much of it. Okay. Um, I don't foresee a situation where I'll have too much uh, smooth stone and stone bricks, but eh, who knows? Maybe there will be a case in the future. I guess we'll find out. All right, so if you have too much of these items, if you're overflowing and your your barrels that we've already defined that can hold, you know, 64 stacks of it is not, um, you know, able to hold anymore, then go ahead and just drop it right here. That's the last line on the stop, okay? So let's go ahead and put, eh, we'll take a couple items out of here. Okay, how's that sound? And we're going to go drop a stack into here. All right, so what we should see happening is some blue particle effects occurring here and then some blue particle effects occurring here. So what it's going to do is it's going to come in, it's going to realize it's full, and then all the remaining cobblestone will go into the trash can and get deleted from the world. Anytime I take any cobblestone out of here, it's going to go ahead and start filling up the cobblestone in the barrel again before it starts filling the trash can. Cool. I like it. All right, guys, currently I'm pulverizing wood. Why would I do that? Well, I'd like to get some wood chips. Why would I like wood chips? You can use wood chips to create paper. Hey, after all, paper really is made from wood. Cool, right? So uh, I just wanted to get this so I could show you guys the next component of this build. Awesome, more paper, good. Now I can make more um, blank modules. After I collect a little bit more redstone. So why have I been using Logistics Chassis Pipes Mark II? So far, you've really only seen me put one of these modules into each of these Logistics Chassis Pipes, right? What's the other module I want to put in there? Well, why don't I show you guys the Provider Module. Okay, this guy's pretty neat. Uh, it's going to require some golden chipsets because it's a higher tier module. It's a pretty complicated one in what it does. So we want to make sure we have some golden chipsets on hand. We're also going to need some blue dye, a.k.a. lapis. Okay. Let's go ahead and make a provider module. Or three. 
I'm going to place the provider module for now. It's eventually going to wind up in all these guys, I'm not going to lie. Okay, but for now, we're going to place them right in here. Okay, provider modules can be configured. You can provide them, uh, you can specify which items to provide. Leave this empty if it provides all of them. Or you can set it to exclude. You can say, you know, don't provide these items, but provide everything else. You can also set it to different modes. Okay, I'll get to the modes in a minute here. Let's come over to this wall and take a look at what I want to make next, which is a request logistics pipe. Request logistics pipe. That doesn't look too hard. I just need an iron gear. I should be able to manage that, right? Sure. And we'll upgrade that guy to stone and then iron. And then we can make ourselves a request logistics pipe. Good deal. That I'm going to place right in the wall here. And as that's not connected to our network at the moment, we do want to do that. So let's sneak down here and run some pipes. Ta-da! Everything's connected. So provider pipes will have access to all the items in an inventory and provide them to the network wherever it's needed. Currently we've been working with passive routing, which means we've been dumping items into the network by way of the extractor module. We're just pushing it in there and it has to find its way. Passively it says, hey, anybody out there looking for iron? And passively this thing responds and says, yeah, I'll take the iron, send it over here. No problem. Now we're looking at active routing, which is I can actively say, hey, give me some iron. The provider module can provide it for me because it has access to this chest. How do I request it? I request it with a requester pipe. By right clicking on the requester pipe, we can see all the items that are made available in the chests that have provider modules attached to them. So you can see here, a bunch of different items are available. I've got all this cool stuff. If I needed, I don't know, 10 pieces of copper, I would highlight the copper ingot. I'd hit the plus button until it gets up to 10. Or optionally, I could hit the double plus, which increases it by 10 at a time, or the triple plus, which increases it by 64 at a time. Cool. AKA one stack, right? So 64 or one stack plus zero. Pretty neat, right? So let's say I wanted 10. Click request. Boom. Ta-da! Here comes 10 copper. Beautiful. If I want to send it back to where it belongs, it can go back into the chest, and it'll get routed appropriately. So right now we have to uh, right click on this request logistics pipe with a wrench. Only a wrench will it be allowed to request with, but eh, I'm going to change that. That sounds like a boring and terrible way to live. I'm going to come over here and grab myself. I've got a redstone diamond chip set made, of course, with a diamond and a piece of redstone. I actually made two. Uh, I'm going to upgrade my request logistics pipe to a request logistics pipe mark two, which as you can see, Faster than a Mark I, lets you manually request items. Items can come from any source pipe. Put a chest on a pipe to catch items coming out if you want, optionally. Request logistics pipe right there. Ta-da, all hooked up, all connected. Works the same way, except you don't need to use a wrench. You can right click with your empty hand or any item or tool that you currently have. Anything you right click on this with will open up the inventory to allow you to request items. Nice, right? If I wanted to have access to my mob drops chest, it's as easy as installing a request uh, provider module right here. Boom. Now I have access to all the mob drop stuff. Oh look, I need some arrows please. And you'll also notice that another thing that's pretty cool here is you can also see the thongcraft aspects over on the left that are now available. So take a look at that. Well, if you've scanned the item, you can see which thongcraft aspects are in there. Pretty neat, right? Cool. So there's a setting that I mentioned earlier, the switch button right here. Let me show you an example of why it would be useful. How much wool do I have in here? Six. Okay, I'm going to come over to my request pipe, type in wool, we'll find it, and I'm going to request all six. Six wool, request successful. Ah, thank you, sir. If we come over here, we'll see that there is no more wool in the mob drops chest. Where's the wool going to go when I sort it with my sorting chest right here? Well, it's going to route to the default route because there's no white wool in any polymorphic item sync chests. That's probably not what I want to have happen. So let's change things up a little bit. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change the provider module. And I'm going to set it to either leave first stack, which means it'll completely ignore the very first stack in the inventory. This is useful if you have all the same items in here. We're not going to do that. Leave the last stack. 
eh, we're not going to do that either. We're going to not even leave the first and last stack. We're going to leave one item per stack. What this means is it's only going to be allowed to provide up to, um, you know, all the items minus one. So for example, if I have six wool in here and I go over to my pipe over here, we'll see it's only telling me I've got five wool available. It's not going to give me access to that last piece of wool. So I can request all that's available in here. And now there's no more white wool available. Well, guess what? There is one piece of white wool in the chest because I configured it to leave one piece in there all the time. Now, if I ever go to put wool back, it's always going to sort back into the appropriate chest. Pretty smart, right? Let me go ahead and make this change here. One item per stack and here. Awesome. There's one other upgrade I want to make while I'm here. This thing is far too slow for me. Let's upgrade it to a Mark III. Simply add in a diamond module. There we go. Extractor module, Mark III. Let's toss this guy in here. Now we're talking. That's the speed I was looking for. Stacks at a time and all. Nice, right? See you later, cobblestone. Nice knowing you. Very, very fast, the Mark III's are. You'll definitely want to have them on hand uh, when possible. So I think that pretty much covers most of the stuff. I think everything else has been pretty well sorted otherwise. Yeah, I think we're working out pretty well here, guys. Nice, right? Okay, that looks good to me. So what I need to do is uh, just wait a few minutes here. I'm cooking up a little bit more of these uh, golden redstone chipsets. Um, remember back last episode when I said you're probably going to want to go with the uh, route of producing these chipsets instead of it? Think of how much gold and iron I've already saved by doing this the, um, you know, the chipset way instead of using four gold and four iron each time I made one of these things. Obviously, I could have been a little bit more compact if I wanted to, but meh. I'm fine with it. I like the way it works. Uh, there's one other thing I want to get going. Let's get, should have some cobblestone, yes. And I'm gonna request some gravel. I guess I could use, oh, you know what? I don't have the provider module set up in my gravel setup here yet, so let's just go get some. Let's um, lock you down. There we go. Cobblestone plus gravel yields cobblestone structure pipes. And I'm also going to get myself a bit of these stone bricks. If I put cobblestone structure pipes plus stone bricks in here, uh, we're going to have the option to make facades. Facades are kind of like the covers for any build craft style pipes. They also work on applied energistic stuff, a mod we haven't really gotten to yet. But if we go ahead and choose the facade here as being the target, um, it's going to take much less energy to build a facade, like 8,000 instead of the 40,000 that chipsets take. Um, so not a big deal. It should pretty quickly get me the fa facades that I want. Uh, the cool thing about facades is they also kind of automatically go ahead and get themselves appropriately set up um, in terms of how they look. So if you place a facade on the side of a pipe versus the top, etc., like if I put it on the top there, it's going to automatically, let's see if I'll be able to demonstrate this easily, probably not too easily. Gravity gun. Well, you won't be able to see it here, but trust me when I say it's connecting, it's not blocking it like um, those um, covers would, okay? So facades look pretty good. They'll also be used here. Uh, they act like covers when they don't have a chest connected to them. So anywhere that doesn't have a chest, I'll put as a cover, and it'll look pretty nice. So that the floor looks good once again. Don't worry, I didn't forget. More facades. Cool. All right. We'll let this stuff run again, and uh, I'll work on a few more facades and a couple other things, and then we might move on to, uh, so there's an example, right? Shift right click a facade with another facade to pop it off. Cool. All right, back in a few moments, guys. All right, guys, we're back, and I'm hanging out down underneath where my barrels are at, and I'm going to run some pipes straight off in this direction. And you can see I'm using Batmorph here because it allows me to fit within a one by one square. It's a pretty nice method of getting around. Cool. Um, what I'd actually like to do is come over here. Come here, you. Don't worry, I'll take care of this little weirdness that's happening in a moment. In fact, I can take care of it right now by just doing that. It won't actually connect or do anything. I just don't like the way it looks. So I fix it because you know, I like making things work properly. 
I know, ironic, right? The one thing that like bothers me with the way something looks. Usually I don't care too much about how things look. Okay, coming straight across here. One downside to Batmorph is sometimes you can get stuck within blocks, especially things like micro blocks or something smaller than a full size block, and sometimes get your player stuck. But just break it, you'll be fine. All right, uh, I have ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 something in here. I know I made it. There we go. I made provider logistics pipes. Cool. What these guys are going to do is they act just like the provider module, except they're just a pipe. So I don't have to have the chassis pipe in place. Unfortunately, the only thing they can do is act like a provider pipe. You can't have them do other things, but hey, that's okay, because all I really want to do is provide the items within here. Let's head back to our base and see what the result is, shall we? I should have access to my charcoal, and my wood, and my saplings, and my apples. Awesome. Check that out. Pretty cool, right? I like it. Uh, now, I didn't set those guys over there to have the um, leave one mode thingy on, so let's take care of that. Like I said, it's not completely necessary, especially something that you'll have so much of, but it doesn't hurt. Leave one item per stack. One item per stack, one item per stack, there we go. Cool. Now for my next trick, supplier logistics pipes. Supplier logistics pipes will supply an inventory with stuff. That's pretty darn useful. Um, let's go ahead and clear out a little bit of space in here so I can get around and do stuff. What I'm going to want to do is probably here we'll have our supplier logistics pipes here, here, and here. I know what I'm going to want to make. Take a break for a minute, would you? There we go. Pipe plugs. Pipe plugs can prevent two pipes from connecting to each other. And they do a really good job of it too. We'll probably want to pipe plug this guy. Come on, pipe plug. You're not going to work? That's interesting. I wonder if it doesn't like me being in morph. Yep, it didn't. Okay. Um, so if we do that, then we don't have these, like, you know, weird junction round robin circle pipe thingies. All right. Uh, what did I want to do here? I wanted to grab some charcoal. I happen to have a stack right here. And I'm going to configure these pipes to items to keep stocked. Cool. Request mode, you can say, you know, partial, full. Bulk 50, bulk 100, infinite, pretty neat. I'll just say request mode partial, sounds good. Um, and I'm going to say, hey, keep 64 charcoal inside the Steam Dynamo at all times for me, would you? And it's going to initiate a request, which will actively pull from the provider pipes or from any inventory that happens to have stuff. Hey, there's some charcoal. Nice. Thank you. And it'll actively keep it stocked. So as it goes ahead and runs out of charcoal, it's going to go ahead and request more and more and more and more. See? Keeping it stocked all the time with 64. Pretty cool, right? And I'm going to do the same thing here. I guess I'll stick it with partial mode and here as well. Cool. So they're going to actively request charcoal and they're going to constantly keep the steam dynamos set up with charcoal. Not a bad little system. I don't think so. Cool. And then this thing will be able to recharge itself now. Nice. So there's one more trick up my sleeve before we wrap up this episode. Ender chest. Cool. I'm going to place my ender chest right there. Hello, ender chest. How are you? White, white, white ender chest. Nifty, huh? 
And this is an ender chest right here. Uh-oh, what happened to all my stuff? That's right, I forgot. Probably all heading in this direction somewhere. Yep, there it all goes. No big deal. I'll get it all in a minute. Uh, so, the white, white, white ender chest. Looking pretty good. Let's get this thing set up. I would like to keep, I think, white, white. Well, let's go with... What colors do we want to go with? I don't know. It doesn't really matter all that much, but I think it would be neat to go with something cool. I could go with... Let's go with blue. Blue sounds like a good color for sorting things, doesn't it? Yeah, blue feels like a good sorting chest. One, two, three. Now I've got a blue, blue, blue ender chest. And I can go get my tools and gadgets back right here. Put them back where they belong. Cool. All right, so what am I gonna do here? Well, instead of keeping this on the white, white, white frequency for now, I'm just gonna show you how this is gonna work. I'm going to shift right click and change my ender pouch to be blue, blue, blue. Anything that goes into the ender pouch is also going into the ender chest. Anything that goes into the ender chest is automatically getting sorted. Ta-da! I just opened up my ender pouch and sorted my lapis directly into my system. Cool. Anywhere I go, anywhere I want to be, I can sort things no problem. And they will sort just happily. Look at that. Cleaning up my inventory on the go. Gotta love it. And everything's sorting to the appropriate location. Nice, right? That's how we roll. All right, guys. For now, this is Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. We've got a pretty solid sorting system going on here. I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, there's a couple things I need to make. Um, specifically, i got to get a couple more provider modules down into these things. Not a big deal. I'll be able to provide these items to the network as needed. Um, and I probably want to clean up some of this stuff down here. I kind of like with logistics pipes the fact that you can see items zipping around within the piping system. So I don't feel bad leaving it going. Um, what I think I'll do is let this whole thing um, stay out in the open so we will continue to see the pipes flowing around and items shooting all over the place and as we advance and get more and more complex logistics type systems we're going to wind up seeing lots of items zipping all over the place and it's going to look really cool um, but for now like I said got to clean up a little bit so let me just get a couple things to get situated in between this episode and next I will install my provider modules I need like three or four more of these things not that big a deal alright guys for now this is Direwolf20 signing off hope you've enjoyed the episode and as always take it easy